Hello and welcome to this YouTube video on CCT diagrams, TTT diagrams and hardness in carbon steels. To begin with, let me start by sharing the screen so you can review the PowerPoint as we go along. My name is Girish Kelkar and I am a welding consultant operating as WJM Technologies. And additional information about my consulting and training services is on the web at welding-consultant.com. Uh, there are other uh, videos in this metallurgy playlist and this entire YouTube channel, the Weld Nugget, has been set up for engineering personnel who might be dealing with welding on a regular basis but do not have a technical or background or training in metallurgy or welding. So all of these videos are meant to make it's easier for you to understand the concepts without feeling like you're attending some uh, grad school courses over there. There are videos already on the playlist, including introduction to physical metallurgy, introduction to mechanical metallurgy, weld section analysis, phase diagrams, and carbon steels. So this video on CCT and TTT diagrams makes use of some of the information which has already been shared. What is a TTT diagram? So before in one of these previous videos, we talked about phase diagrams. Phase diagrams are called equilibrium diagrams because these phases are formed at equilibrium at a given temperature. TTT diagrams add the element of time. So now we have time temperature transformation diagram. That's what TTT is. And if you look at this diagram, on the vertical axis, we have temperature. On the horizontal axis, we have time. Usually the time is denoted on a scale uh, because it's not linear because otherwise it would be a very long diagram. So we have, it's an exponential scale. We have one, one second, 10 seconds, 100, 1000, 10,000. And the, I'm showing you over here a generic uh, TTT diagram uh, for carbon steel. So not for a specific particular composition of carbon steel. So we have austenite above uh, 727. Again, that temperature will depend on the type of carbon steel you're using. It might be from 727 up to 913. The bold line over here is the start line, start of the transformation from austenite to either perlite, either bainite or martensite. And the dashed line is the finish line where the transformation completes as long as you go from start and go all the way to the dashed line on the finish. And we'll see how that works on the next slide. So let's say you have a uh, piece of steel and which has been heated to above the austenite temperature. So now it's 100% austenite. And you cool it down slightly below the austeniting temperature and hold it there for a long time. And that uh, component will slowly transform and from at the start point, it will start transforming to perlite. And if you hold it long enough up to the finish point, then it is completely transformed into perlite. Perlite is one of the phases uh, which can form when you cool austenite. If you take a similar component at that high temperature, cool it down below the nose, cool it down quickly to a temperature below the nose, and then hold it for a long time, you're going to get a phase called bainite. Bainite is a modified version of perlite, but it is much stronger and harder. The third option is to take that a steel component at that high temperature and quickly cool it down. So fast enough that you miss the nose and go all the way down to room temperature. And there you will convert uh, the austenite to martensite. Now, the TTT diagrams are more commonly used for heat treatment because a lot of the heat treatment processes require that, that you're going to raise the component to a certain temperature, hold it for a certain length of time, and then allow it for cooling. So these diagrams are more commonly used for heat treatment. But there's one situation where we come across in welding. Uh, for example, if you do not want martensite to form, then the option is to preheat the steel to a temperature higher, higher than the martensite start temperature. And then when you weld it, after welding, the component, the weld cools down to up to the preheat, 
And then because of the component already been preheated, it holds it there for a reasonable amount of time. And if the time is long enough, then you will get substantial amount of bainite or it might be a mixture of bainite and martensite, but then the, nonetheless, it is much softer than 100% martensite. So that is a situation where we end up using these kind of diagrams if we are intending to form bainite. In reality, uh, we don't do that all the time. So there are situations where the weld might form and it just, as, you, as soon as you turn the energy off, the weld starts cooling, which is typically in air. And air cooling is quite fast. And so the, the phases which form might be slightly different. And hence, we have something called a continuous cooling diagram. So continuous cooling diagrams are also used in heat treatment because they are they show phases which will form when a steel component is cooled at a certain rate so for example this line over here represents slow cooling which could be of the order of two or three or five degrees per second and there's another line i'm showing over here which is faster cooling which will be to the left of this line the slow cooling line and that could be 100 200 100 250 say degrees per second degree centigrade per second here again, we have the bold line, which is a start, and the dashed line, which is a finish. Of course, this diagram looks slightly different than the previous one, and we'll review that. So if we take a component, which is austenite, and heat it, let's say, in a furnace, and we just turn the furnace off and bring it out and keep it uh, outside exposed to air, uh, it might have, depending on the size of the uh, component, it might have reasonably fast or slow cooling, and it will start forming uh, perlite over here and finish forming perlite uh, at this point, and after that, it just cools down to room temperature. If the component is fairly small and you would do faster cooling, such as uh, throw it in a bucket of water, for example, then the cooling rate is going to be much faster and you will find a, a different uh, location for that cooling curve and might form different phases. And which ones will form, we will see on the next slide. So if you do a slow cool, like an air cool, uh, you might find uh, a mixture of, uh, we, we might find 100% perlite, which is a mixture of ferrite and cementite. If you go slightly faster cool, you might find a mixture of martensite plus perlite. So some austenite is transferred to perlite, but there is still remaining austenite and that gets converted to martensite when it reaches this martensite start temperature. If the cooling rate is fast enough that you miss the nose, this is called the nose of the diagram. If you miss the nose, then the steel is completely transformed to martensite. So at a critical cooling rate, so this number three is the critical cooling rate. If you are just at this cooling rate or faster, then you are going to form uh, the entire martens austenite is going to transform to martensite. So here it is interesting. You do not form bainite when you uh, in carbon steels when it is cooled at a fixed rate with without preheating. So there will be a lot of wells where you do not form bainite as long as there is no preheating in carbon steels. Now, how much martensite will it form and how hard it's going to be can be gauged from this chart over here. We have hardness on the vertical axis, carbon percentage on the horizontal axis. So for a given amount of carbon, uh, the amount of martensite maximum which can be formed, uh, this is based on the hardness measurement. So for example, if you have 0.4% carbon, uh, and you measure the hardness, and hardness ends up being close to around, say, 62, then you know that all the austenite was transformed to martensite. That means the cooling rate was fast enough. So the cooling rate was faster than this location 3 over here. Martensite is a very brittle phase and can reduce the fatigue life and also cause hydrogen-related cold cracking. So some Strengthening of the weld by formation of martensite is fine, but if there's too much martensite, then you may have to take some corrective actions. There are many mechanisms of hardening in steel, including work hardening, grain refinement, and rapid cooling, but usually 
maximum hardness which is can be obtained in a particular carbon steel is governed by the martensite formation which is related to rapid cooling usually if you have a hardness above 40 hrc that is considered detrimental so if you go back over here so above 40 hrc means a carbon content of slightly more than 0.1 percent so if there are any steel components where you have carbon content more than 0.1 say 0.12 percent and the cooling rate is fast enough you are going to be above 40 hrc and depending on the situation, you may have to take some corrective action. And that can include either going for a lower carbon uh, steel uh, with a lower carbon content or reduce the cooling rate by preheating as an example. Or another option is to reduce the hardness of the weld by providing some post weld heat treatment called tempering. And we are going to discuss that topic in another video, a later video. Uh, in this playlist. So in summary, uh, the CCT diagrams and TTT diagrams are very useful in heat treatment. So they are very commonly used in heat treatment. And many of these diagrams are available in handbooks and they can also be calculated. If they're not available, you can also calculate a diagram for a certain composition with the help of softwares. However, the cooling rates in wells are hard to predict. So these diagrams, CCT diagrams, will show you lines of different cooling rates. But your weld geometry can be quite complex. Uh, and especially when you have dissimilar materials uh, welded all onto a bigger structure, for example. So it's very hard to predict exactly what is the cooling rate at different locations. So to resolve any welding issues, uh, the CCT and TTT diagrams are a good baseline to start with. So you have a general idea what the cooling rate is going to be or what phases will form at a certain cooling rate. But ultimately, you have to make welds and run a hardness scan to see what is the level of hardness change in the weld at different locations. And you can confirm that the phases which form at that location to match uh, the CCT and TTT diagrams by con conducting metallographic analysis. Mm -hmm. So metallurgy lab can tell you exactly what phases they are seeing in different locations in the weld. Are they seeing perlite, martensite, bainite, and so on. Now keep in mind that this discussion we have in this video is primary for, primarily for carbon steels. Uh, as we add more alloying elements into carbon steel, these diagrams and the shapes of these CCT diagrams change and it affects the, obviously affects the welding. And all of those topics we're gonna to discuss in other videos which will be presented later, okay? I want to thank you for your time. And if you're interested in learning about welding and joining, please do subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, there are many videos on different topics in different playlists on this uh, YouTube channel. And I'm sure you'll find quite a few of them to be of interest. Uh, once again, thank you for your time and wishing you the very best in your efforts to improve the welding quality. Take care.